There is already a case before the House that's um, very clear. The Prime Minister said no rules were broken. 50 fines for breaking the rules and the law have already been issued. So there's already um, a reasonable case. Because a lot of our conventions and rules and traditions are based on the principle of honour and that people, uh, members of this House wouldn't, other than inadvertently, mislead the House. Um, and that's why um, the rules are set, but they're set on that proposition. And if, if there is a member of this House, whoever that is, that doesn't abide by those principles, uh, those honourable principles, then that tests or stress tests the rules that we have. We're not claiming a principle to support these benches and not those benches. It's a principle that supports yeah. all of us. Because the convention that Parliament must not be misled and that in return we don't accuse each other of lying are not curious quirks of this strange place. They're fundamental pillars on which our constitution is built. Yeah. And they're observed wherever parliamentary democracy thrives. With them, our public debate is elevated. When members assume good faith on behalf of our opponents, we can explore, test, interrogate our reasonable disagreements about how we achieve our common goals. Because ultimately, no matter which benches we sit on, no matter which whip we follow, fundamentally we are all here for one reason, to advance those common goals of the nations, of the peoples that make up our United Kingdom. It's very rare that the whole of the nation goes through something together, a trauma together that was COVID. Um, and there were the, the awful cases of funerals, of weddings that were missed, of parents who didn't see the birth of their children. Yeah. And they're awful cases. But I think almost every family was marked during this period, including my own, by things that we didn't do that we would have liked to have done, usually visiting elderly parents, seeing children. And there was a huge sense of guilt that we didn't do it, including in my own family guilt that because we followed the rules, we didn't do what we thought was actually right by our elderly relatives. And that's why it hurts so much. Mm -hmm. And that's why anybody trying to say this is just like a speeding ticket doesn't understand what this goes to politically and emotionally. It's what our, makes our democracy grow in ways that reflect the hopes and tackle the fears of those that we represent. It's what makes our democracy thrive it's what makes this house thrive. It's what makes Britain thrive. Yeah. And Mr Speaker, we don't have to look far to see what happens when that faith is lost. And there is no hope of reason resolving disagreements. When nations are divided, when they live in different worlds where their own truths and their own alternative facts, democracy is then replaced by an obsession with defeating the other side. Yeah. Those we disagree with become enemies. The hope of learning and adapting is lost. Politics becomes a blood sport rather than a quest to improve lives. A winner takes all politics where inevitably everyone loses out. They say there are worse crimes. He didn't rob a bank. He only broke the rules for 10 minutes. It was all a long time ago. Every time one, I will in just a moment, Every time one of these arguments is trotted out, the status of this House is gradually eroded yeah. and our democracy becomes a little weaker. And members opposite know that the Prime Minister has stood before this House and said things that are not true, safe in the knowledge that he will not be accused of lying because he can't be. He stood at the dispatch box and point blank denied rule breaking took place when it did. And he did so, as he did so, he was hoping to gain extra protection from our good faith that no Prime Minister would ever deliberately mislead this House. He's used our faith, our conventions, to cover up his misdeeds. Because, I'll just finish this point, because after months of denials, of absurd claims that all the rules were followed, 
of feigned outrage at his staff discussing rule breaking. I understand and share the anger up and down the country at seeing number 10 staff seeming to make light of lockdown measures. And I can understand how infuriating it must be to think that the people who have been setting the rules have not been following the rules, Mr Speaker, because I was also furious to see that clip. We now know the law was broken. Mm -hmm. yep. We know the Prime Minister himself broke the law. Yep. Yep. And we know that he faces the possibility of being found to have broken it again and again and again. We already know he has a case to answer. The Prime Minister said no rules were broken, but over 50 fines for breaching the rules and the law have now been issued, including to the Prime Minister. And anybody who denies that simple fact has their head in the sand or has given up any interest in the truth, given up interest in the traditions of our nation, in order to prop up a law-breaking Prime Minister. Yeah. Um, we have a duty here today in relation to this motion and relation to these principles. And if we fail in our duty, the public will not forgive and forget that we have done so, because this will be the Parliament that failed. Failed to stand up for honesty, integrity and telling the truth in politics failed to stand up to a Prime Minister who seeks to turn our good faith against us and failed to stand up for our great democracy. And it's not just the eyes of our country that are upon us. It will also be the judgment of future generations who will look back at what members of this great house did when our customs were tested, when its traditions were pushed to breaking point, when we were called up to stand up for honesty, integrity and for truth. I move the motion, Mr Speaker. Yeah.